I'm Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates. Go and sketch a long-tailed skipper instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a long-tailed skipper by applying what you learned in your step-by-step -step lesson. First, collect all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. You can sketch at a garden, a park, your backyard, or even from an HD video at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a long-tailed skipper for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. The most important thing is for you to relax, observe nature, and get some practice sketching. You can help this tiny business by liking this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and checking out NatureSketchCreate.com. So use what you know about the skipper to create this sketch from the live animal or the HD video of this animal. So first you want to see what part of the animal you want to draw, what kind of position you want it in. So kind of think about that a little bit and where you want it placed on your paper and how big you want it. You can use your final reference image to kind of get an idea of how big this animal can be on your page. That can help with sizing a little bit. Another thing that can help is sketching it a few times, just doing some really, really rough sketches, practice sketches, before creating a slightly nicer sketch like we're gonna do just now. And you'll want to first start with some simple shapes. And I'm going to just start with a line going from the head down to the tail to kind of indicate about the position and the size. And then I'm going to add some simple shapes like triangles and ovals to give me an idea of where those wings are gonna be on the page. And I'm kind of looking at it in relation to the tail and in relation to the head here. And so then we can start adding some of the details. So we can start defining some of these lines and turning them into sh other shapes. So again, these details are being drawn in using simple shapes. kind of indicating that direction. And sometimes you have to wait a little bit for the animal to be in the right position. It's good to practice with, if you're not actually out sketching this animal outside, to practice inside with a moving video rather than a still image. But if you need to start with just a still image, that's fine too. You're practicing drawing, depends on where you're at. Whatever you do, don't get too caught up with accuracy and detail. Try to make it fast. That way you can build up the skill of creating it quickly when you're out eventually painting live animals, if you're not already. So again, I'm just starting to define some of these shapes with some more simple shapes on top and I'm kind of thinking of this as a negative space as a space without any marks in it so I can figure out the sizing of the tail compared to the wing and see if the shape and the distance of the wing and the tail is correct so I can look at I don't have to just look at the shape of the tail or shape of the wing I also can look at this shape and see if that's right. And I just compare it to my reference image or reference video or animal that's in front of me. Whatever you are doing, you can apply it. And again, I'm just kind of taking my time adding this shape in. It's a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more of a curved 
angle and I'm taking it one shape at a time. So I'm taking this shape, this line, and then I'm looking at this area in relation to the body and I'm thinking of what does this shape look like? So where is this curved line on the bottom in relation to the body? And it looks like it's kind of curved up like this and then gets kind of round and big there. And then this one looks like there's a straight line that pretty much goes down to the tail and then a curved line that goes between those two. It looks as if when this is folded, you may need to erase every once in a while. Try to limit the amount you erase. But if you're going to get confused, and I think I was going to start getting confused, you can do some erasing. So I think that this line pretty much lines up with what you can see of the body here underneath. So just doing a rough shape there. And then I'm going to add in the eye big cute eyes of this little butterfly and you can use what you know about the eye looks like if you need to. So once you get this all mapped in you can use your reference image to finish it if it flies away if you're creating this in person. And you can write on the outside what you did before it flew away and how you finished it, just for your own reference. And then I have this crochet hook antenna tip here. Just really, I think these little skippers are so adorable. Sometimes I will go up to a skipper, I don't have this kind here in California. Well, I think that they do actually live here, but I've never seen one and I'll put my finger in front of them and they'll step right onto my finger and just sit on my tip of my finger for a little while, perfectly still. And they're so cute to see fluttering quickly from flower to flower. I love watching them. I'm going to just draw some lines here. So again, I'm just drawing some lines and simple shapes some rectangles, circles, just to define those feet. Can't see a lot of the detail in the video, but I can base some of those ideas off of my reference image here. So then I can start adding even more details now that I have the basic shapes mapped out and maybe change some of the direction so that it's correct. So it looks a little off. So again, I'm just going to think about this line and it looks a little bit further down like that. So I'm going to fix that. So that that's a little bit more accurate real quick and I can leave that but it may confuse me a bit so I'm just gonna go ahead and erase it and it's gonna be a little bit more curved too it's not gonna be really a straight line looks like as if some of the hair on the thorax is pointed this direction so I'm gonna just kind of draw in some lines and then on the abdomen doing the same thing. And there's kind of a central line in the middle. And then it ends right about here. And I may have made some of these things a little too big in relation to other parts, but it's just a sketch. So that's okay. It's something when I finish, I can say some of these might be a little bit out of proportion. adding some of those hairs in. I 
and adding some of these details in. And like I said, if things get really confusing, go ahead and erase it and you'll see that this eraser takes a lot of that smudginess out, whereas the white eraser tends to smudge a lot. I think this might be a little too long. I might be throwing the sizing off. I'm just looking at it a couple of times to try to make sure I have some correct sizing here before I start adding some more details. And this is obviously just a little bit too big. I think that's fairly similar, probably a bit off, but this is just a sketch, that's okay. And then I'll just start trying to map in some of these spots on the wing, and I'm just getting in the general space they're sitting. I'm drawing in some lines to get an idea of that. So it doesn't need to be exact. Again, just basically adding in some shapes in the same general area. This is just a sketch. It might be more interesting as if you find a butterfly skipper wing on the side and you draw it on, on a little side here to show the actual details without the animal moving. Okay. It's okay to erase every once in a while as long as you don't get too carried away with it. So this video that is moving a lot even though it's moving back into the same position, so it is difficult to get. And skippers move quite a bit, so I wanted to make sure. They can also sit still for a long time as well. So I wanted to show something that was moving quite a bit as a reference image, reference video. To help you get an idea of how to draw a skipper. A little band on both of these here, here, and on this wing here. I'm just erasing that because I think if this band is going to be white, it's going to be too gray underneath. And look at it just a little bit more, maybe it's a little bit of fuzz down there, kind of like the same. Under the eye, define the eye a little bit more. Make sure the wings are lined up the way they should be. Double check my different spaces and shape sizes. And I think that looks pretty good. It's still a little messy and a little rough. I'm gonna go ahead and start there. Adding in the common name. So next I'll add some color. 
Now I'm going to add some paint. I went ahead and revived my watercolors that I used and already mixed for the step-by-step. -step. I just saved them, they dried out, and I added a little bit of water to each one with my water brush. That way I don't have to spend extra time mixing or thinking about what colors to use. And I'll go ahead and start in the same order as well, just to make it really simple. I'll test out my color, the Skipper Tan, on my paper, maybe just a little wetter. Wetter being that it is less concentrated, it has more water added to it in the palette. And I'm just gonna use it to add to everything, except for the eye and these white bands. This is gonna have a rough, sketchy look at the end, obviously. But this is just a sketch, it's exactly what it is. We're just studying this animal, getting an idea of what it looks like. Try to remember to stop here and not fill in that band, that color. And since I don't put a lot of watercolor on, it should dry fairly fast. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some of the green. So if you put a lot of water onto the paper, you may need to wait before putting on another color. Otherwise, it'll behave differently. So if you want it to go exactly where you want, or where you're putting it and not blend together or move, then you're going to need to wait till it dries. And this skipper is a lot bluer than the one that I painted for the step-by-step, -step. so I'm not going to add as much. But you could also get real creative here if you want to just kind of do your own thing and add more green wherever you want. Maybe do something in between this and the reference image. And it could be just the angle since they're a bit iridescent and depending on how the light's hitting them. Next I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the brown color, the chestnut brown. Just test it on my paper, make sure I have the right concentration of that color from water to color in my palette so that it's not too dark or not too light and I can't really see any of the spots here so I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in but the there's a little bit of lighter band there I'm going to add this to the body too because I can't really see spots on the wings that I painted in and that outer edge of the wing as well. Make sure to pick up more color whenever you need it. Just continue on from one side to the other like using crayon or marker. Paintings always go through an ugly stage, so don't worry too much, just keep going, just keep on going. Looks like I'm going to add it to maybe some central area here and then to the tail, leaving those outer edges, that lighter tan color. There is a white band on the outside there in some areas. Need to add a little bit to the head as well. Uh, not a lot, the way this is hitting, it's not really the same. And add it to the eye. A 
Next, I'm gonna take the blue. I'm adding some paint, or some, I'm adding some water to the blue in my palette, so it's not too concentrated, but not super light. Cut something in the middle. Dabbing off on my towel and then adding it to the body. I'm not gonna cover up all of this yellow. I'm also adding it in the direction the hairs are in, the line motion here. Being too exact, just you know, getting an idea. A little bit of blue up here. And this is just a sketch. You're just getting an idea of this animal, not an exact representation. And I'm going to use several different levels of the blue and use the really dark concentrated and then a lighter one and that will make this image have more contrast and look a little bit more realistic. I'm going to add a little bit more of this chestnut right here so it doesn't really go all the way down there. And most of this is dry. You can check by just kind of dabbing. So I'm going to paint in some of the sepia color here. Test it again and I'm gonna add that to the wings in these areas. There's some areas that are just a little bit darker you can see on the wings. And I'm gonna add that in mostly to the lined areas, the wing veins. Some a little bit on the bottom here. Just roughly adding it in, not getting super exact. This is just a sketch. And it seems like around the spots there's a lot of dark areas. So I'll just kind of roughly add that in there too, but not really these ones. I'm not adding any more. So where if you drew these lines in, took an extra minute to do it, it was helpful. And if you didn't, that's okay too. Get what you can and then this is pretty dark in here so I'm going to add color in there same with this space there and then I don't really see a lot of the spots but I do see that's a little bit lighter right in that area in general so I'm just going to roughly add that in and avoid those spots right in there giving that same kind of feel. Adding this to the tail. Again, trying to preserve some of that other color underneath, but mostly the tail's pretty dark. And I'm just looking at the wings again, trying to see if there's anything else that, any other spaces that need to be a little bit darker. It looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna add this to the body too and maybe to the legs and such as well. Maybe the eye. And then I'm gonna take the green and add a little bit of another darker layer of the green. So layer, it's a little bit of paint. So since the paint is one on top of the other. It's called a layer. And I'm just going to add a little bit on top, keeping some of that other green showing through. That'll give it a little bit more dimension and make that green really a little bit more iridescent in this very simple illustration sketch of this long-tailed skipper. Next, I'm going to take the chestnut again. Test it out on my paper, looks pretty good. And I'm going to take that right over a lot of this that I just painted, which is dry. Let's 
it's had time to dry. And it will still show that other color underneath because it is watercolor and it's transparent. So you'll see that there's another, that other layer underneath there. And if you color something in that you didn't mean to, that's okay. This is just a sketch. dark blue and add that um, in a line motion to some of these areas, maybe some of the darker areas to create this little bit more depth into this image of the skipper. I'm just doing it in the same direction and trying to think of where the darker areas are and just add that in. Next I'm going to take the darker sepia and again I'm going to add it just some of the areas around the dots on the wings and then also just to darken up the wings themselves and maybe the body a little bit so that it's not super dark this upper wing but the uh, lower wing is on the much darker side and just like this little area right here and the body not completely dark you want to add just a little bit and then you can see that that's going to pop it's going to look a little more dynamic Adding this to the edges of the legs is going to help the tips of the antenna. And then again to these darker areas, just defining them all a little bit more. All these lines really dark areas. And here as well, it's into this lower wing here. And then not over the entire tail, but just the dark areas of the tail, giving it some dimension there as well, letting it really pop. And I don't know if these lines are all in the right spot, but it is just a sketch. It's okay. You can write in, did this quickly, this is just a rough sketch idea of this animal. I don't know if that's exact. It's better to save that kind of stuff for when you have a photo in front of you that you're drawing from, or if you have a wing sitting in front of you to draw from for those kinds of details, or if you're doing a fine art image. And then lastly, I'm gonna add a little bit of this really light wet blue. And this is dry again, so I'm just gonna add that sparingly over the animal, this area here where it's kind of blue, leaving some of the other colors showing through. Clean off my brush and move on to adding some ink lines. I'm gonna do the easy part first, adding all of this with the 005 black micron, the smallest tipped micron. It's going to redraw the common name and the scientific name. And then I can start, and make sure to draw a dab it with your finger. I'm going to start adding in the details. So redrawing the lines you drew initially and redefining them. 
based on where the paint went or what the animal looks like now. Again, if you're out sketching this and the animal's already gone, you can use your reference image to help you figure out the basic idea on how to draw the animal. So since you don't have it in front of you, you can use your painting as your reference. And I'm using the smallest micron pen so that I can be okay with making any kind of mistakes with this initial layer of ink. most of those lines drawn, you can move on to the next micron. Go ahead and be adding some of the O1 lines and this will just kind of define some of the things that are apparently there but nothing that stands out really a lot. So some of the softer lines in the image. So these spots on the wings, I think those are softer lines. And some of these wing veins are softer. So I'm just gonna draw them in. Might redraw them with the thicker micron as well. The hairlines, maybe add some more hairlines here. Some thicker ones. Maybe these outer, add a few more outer tail hairlines. part of the proboscis, proboscis. And then any line that's just a little softer. So maybe this line on the top of the leg. And then I um, also wanted to add in thickening up the scientific name with this micron as well. I don't want it to stand out a whole bunch, but I do want it to be able to be read. And then I'm going to add in the 08 micron, which is the thickest of the three. And this is really fun because it's almost like just drawing in and adds so much more contrast. But be very careful because it does tend to smudge. So sometimes I just color spots in or you can use a hash to kind of color it in without filling in the entire space. To add a little bit more definition, just define some areas and separate them from the others. So this is not well separated from everything else. So I'm gonna just outline it, to separate it from the lower wing. And this part of the body needs a little bit more definition from the wing itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of that in a thick way. Like where that's at. I'm gonna go ahead and write in the common name. And 
now I'm all done. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. You can always add more ink and paint. Make sure it dries before adding other layers. And also don't get too carried away. This is just a sketch. It's just meant to be a rough representation of the animal. Lastly, you'll wanna add some observations to the white areas here. You can say that you left the flower out. You could even draw in the flower uh, with some pencil marks and not paint it, or go ahead and paint in the whole flower if you really want to. This is your sketch. And you might want to think about how did this make you feel put on the outside, or what did you notice about the animal? Uh, or if you were outside, how was the weather? And did you like this? Did it make me feel about the animal itself? Um, you can put observations. As, I think I left out a leg here, so I can add that in as an observation. I left a leg out. And why maybe I left that out, or these spots aren't quite right, you know. Any kind of thoughts that you have about your sketch itself or criticisms as well, you can put those on the outside. And you can pretty much add anything you like. This is your journal. This is your sketch. Make it your own. Thank you for joining me. Please like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check out naturesketchcrate.com.